And Lord Baker, is Rishi Sunak repeating John Major's mistakes? I think what Rishi Sunak is doing is to try to save the Conservative Party from the legacy of Boris Johnson and Liz Truss. Is he succeeding and in that? He is it's certainly serving for extinction because he is sincere, he's honest, he's straightforward. But well, is that's he a slow? change. Is that he is slow a, in dealing with... Can you answer your question, please? I think he is all of those things, and he dealt properly, in my view, with Nadine Zoili. Now, I knew Nadine Zoili vaguely when he was Education Secretary, and I rang up one of his friends a week ago, 10 days ago, and I said, look, my advice to him is not Somebody to listen to my telephone, never mind. Um, my advice to him... Would you turn it off? I will, don't worry. Put it on silent. You're in demand. You really are. He's in demand. Yeah. I don't somehow think it's the Prime Minister. Don't worry. But you were saying I, you called a friend I would to say, talk to Mr Zahawi. I would, and I, I said to a close friend, him, persuade him to resign now. Did because you? Because what happens in a situation like this, that when there are rumours like this, that a Minister of the Crown, in his case, was trying to avoid tax in this country as a British citizen, um, in, in, in some strange way, that is stuck in the public memory and it would always come up. And for him to be the party chairman, trying to persuade swing voters to Conservative, when in the back of their minds, was this the man who actually tried to avoid paying three and a half million pounds worth of tax? I pay all that through my PAYE. And so... Sorry, give me your phone. <laughs> the Prime Minister's very insistent, isn't he? Well, I... I <laughs> can I ask no, you no, finally... No, no, what, no, 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 please let me ask you a question. What's your advice then? To Dominic Raab. Well, first, I think he behaved cr completely correctly in the case of, uh, of Azwili because he did the, the process of asking the uh, ethics minister and yeah. the ethics, uh, no, the, the ethics advisor, and he quite surprisingly did it within a week. Yes, within a week. On, on for two months. And oh, I oh think it was so, uh, really trying to get through to me, isn't he? Someone um, is telling you to shush. Please, finally, you want to So, so therefore, Rob? he's th therefore. Uh, I believe that what is hanging over uh, the Deputy Prime Minister, as you said, are accusations of bullying. And I'm afraid the general public probably feel there's no smoke without fire, and this will hang over the rest of his career. I've no doubt about that. You can't shake it off. It's rather like Mr Sharp in the BBC. It will never, he will never be able to shake over the fact of the fact that he tried to arrange uh, a, a financial deal to help the Prime Minister when he was still trying to be the head of the UTC. Okay. That erodes um, his authority. We're going and to pause it erodes there. Thank the authority you. of the Deputy Prime Minister if he goes on insisting it's not true, it's not true, it's not true. Many, many people he already see that his authority is eroding. OK. Um, just to say, Richard Sharp says he wasn't involved in making a loan or arranging a guarantee, and I'm going to leave it there. And there's your phone, and thank you so much for coming in. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.